are you today? So, this will be your first piano lesson. We, together, will be working through a book to familiarize you with the different manuscript methods and some basic chord structures. Now, this particular piece of music is Ode to Joy by Ludwig van Beethoven. We're going to be looking at the different notation and how precisely these things combine to indicate to you how to play the music. If you suddenly hear a wild jazz melody being played on the piano, that's just one of the cats who really likes jazz. But it's Ode to Joy from Symphony No. 9 by Ludwig van Beethoven for us for now. So, to begin with, as you can see, all music is constructed onto five lines and four spaces between those lines. These are called staves. It forms the foundation of every piece of music that you will work with. Every single line or space is a key on the piano, which is why we use notes to tell us which key to press. You're probably familiar already at the start of the stave with what's called the treble clef and its brother, the bass clef. The treble clef or the G clef, tells us which notes go on which line. So, where the treble clef curls, that particular line is G. So here, on note joy, the treble clef curls onto the second black line. If we look across, the stave, we can see that there's a note there which is G. And that's G. This way, once you know which note is G, you can begin to work out all of the other notes on the stave. It's the same with the bass clef here. However, on the bass clef, the line between the two dots here, here, and here, represents the note F. In the same way that we use the treble clef, we use the bass clef to calculate where the note F would be, and therefore every single other note on the stave. Now, you might be wondering, what happens if I run out of lines on the stave? Well, that's a good question. Let's take a look to see if we can find an example of another piece of music where we run out of lines on the stave. In this piece, you can see here, on the 
the base. There's a rogue C that goes out of the stave. When this happens, all we need to do is put what we call a ledger line through the note. And that way, we know which line it should be on, or between which line it should be. So the little B there is on a space, but the C is on the line. And that just helps us to quickly identify which note we should be playing and when. And those are ledger lines. Between both of these staves is what we call middle C. And middle C is the middle C on the piano. It's the middle of the piano. This can also be a sort of compass for us to work out what all the other notes might be. So let's talk about some of these notes. Here, here, and here, we have probably the more familiar note that you know. And that's what we call a crotchet. A crotchet represents a quarter of a whole note. Very briefly, let's look at what makes up the bar. So, the stave, which carries along here, who's this? The stave is this collection of five lines and four spaces. And we separate this into bar lines. That's not very helpful, is it? Excuse me for one moment whilst I evacuate my cats. Apologies for that. They're still here, don't worry. So, the stove carries on across here, but we need to separate that into what we call bar lines. And we divide the stave into measures. And you can see one, two, three, four bars or measures here. Now, why do we do that? Well, we do that because each piece of music has one or more time signatures, which we can see here. 4-4 four, four is the time signature. Now, there are lots of different time signatures, but today we'll mainly be looking at 4-4. Four, four. And guess who's back? 4-4 four, four means there are four quarter notes to make a whole. Four beats per bar. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And that tells us how many notes we can fit into a bar. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. <laughs> well, apparently somebody doesn't like four, four as a time signature. Perhaps he prefers three over four, which would be one, two, three, one, two, three. Excuse me while I evacuate my cats. So, 
whilst my cat may prefer 3 over 4, today we're looking at 4 over 4, because there are 4 beats per bar, and because 4 over 4 means there are 4 quarter notes to make a whole, that is why we have 4 crotchets here, because a crotchet is quarter, and 4 quarters make a whole. So here we have E, E, F, G, E, E, F, G, G, F, E, D, C, C, D, E, D, C, C. Now what happened there? We've got some different notes at the end here. So first of all, we can see that a ledger line has been used to denote C. That means we know this note is D and E. So we already know this section of notes. E, E, F, G, G, F, E, D, C, C, D, E, D, C. But what's happening? in this final bar. There's a lot of stuff going here. This D has a dot after it. If you put a dot after a note, in this case a crotchet, it increases by half. So this D all of a sudden becomes half more than it was before. And this is in conjunction with a different note that we haven't seen yet. This is called a quaver. No, not the popular crisp. A quaver. When you see a tail like this, that means it's a quaver. A quaver is one-eighth the value of a bar. And notes can have loads of tails which would then divide the value further. If it had two tails, it would be called a semiquaver. And a semiquaver is 1 16th the value of a whole note. And then we have here, at the end, a C, which is a minim. A minim is half the value of a whole. So in this, just in this single bar, we have loads of different notes that combine to fill it. And how do we work that out? So, if this crotchet is quarter of a whole, and this dot means that we add, we increase it by half, plus the quaver, which is one eighth of a whole, and then the minim, which is one half of a whole, we actually fill this bar with music. But the rhythm is what matters here. We know that there are one, two, three, four beats per bar. We've already learned that. But because of the strange values of these notes, we have to play it differently. And that's how it sounds. The C, that is the minim, is longer. It's half the bar. The crotchet, because it has a dot that increases its value by half, pushes it to here, which means that the quaver, which is one eighth of a whole, is very quick. And just before the minim, the C, like that. Okay? So all of these notes leading up here are all on the beat. It's just this last bar, which is a little bit strange.
This sign here just means that it sort of drifts away, diminuendo. Okay. Here we have this circle. And just in this case, we'll use it as an example. This can be a whole note. Now, a whole note is just a circle on its own, and that lasts the entire bar. Okay. So, in the same way, so what we have here, we have a whole note, which is just a circle, a minim which is an empty circle with a tail going up, which is half the value. Then we have the crotchet, which is a quarter of the value. Then with the little tail coming down, we have the quaver, which is an eighth of the value. And if it had two tails, it would be a semi-quaver, but we haven't got any of those here, so don't worry about that. Now it's also worth remembering that there are other types of notes too. We have sharp notes, which are generally played on the black notes. So this is an F here, but it's an F sharp. An F normally sounds like this. But in this case, we push it up one. And that's F sharp or G flat. In the same way here, we have A, and A normally sounds like this. But in this case, it's A flat. So we push it down one. And because of the way this is, this could also be G sharp. And G sounds like this, and G sharp sounds like this. We've looked at a lot of different information here. So I just want to quickly run through it before we look at playing some chords and I'll teach you some tricks so that you can play any chords. So we've looked at staves. Staves make up the basis of the music that we write. Each stave has a treble clef or a bass clef. The treble clef tells us where G is on the stave. In this case, it's here. The bass clef tells us where F is. In this case, it's here. The ledger line is used to help with notes that go under the stave or over the stave. Bar lines divide the stave into bars or measures. The time signature tells us how many notes, quarter notes in this case, we need to make a whole, how many beats there are in the bar. In this case, four beats per bar. This little circle here on its own is a whole note, semi-brief. The empty circle with the little tail going up, it's a minim, which is half. These are the most famous ones, arguably. These are crotchets, and these are quarter of the value. And then, if it has a little tail going down on itself like that, that means it's a quaver, which is one eighth of the value. And they can have more tails, and can eventually become semi-quavers, demi-quavers, semi-demi-quavers, you name it, okay? And these little dots here mean that you increase the time of the note by half. Now, you know how this song sounds, Ode to Joy. So let's play along together. I'll play it on the lower end. And that's the 
basic tune. If you were to play the bass part as well, it would be C, which is a whole note. But with a G on the second. and so on. And that's basically how all of this music theory comes together to help us to play a song. Let's take a quick look at some chords. So this is the keyboard and you remember from the music theory we've just been looking at how this works. Chords when you combine loads of different notes. That's C major. That's F major. This note is C. D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Music goes from A to G. You can combine these notes to make pleasant combinations, either as one, as a chord, or you can arpeggiate it. Today we'll look at how you structure these chords so that you can play any basic chord, either major or minor. C major is C. G. In major chords, there are always three notes between the first two and two between the last two. That means you can play any major chord. To make it minor, you reverse it. So C major, C minor. And this can be done up and down the keyboard. So down here is F. What chord do you think this is? It's F major. Major chords sound happy as a general rule. That's F minor. Sounds a little bit sadder, doesn't it? But it's still a beautiful sound. Okay. What about this one? That's right. It's actually a minor. A major would be like this. Because three notes between and then two. Minor, major. Now what about B? Well, that doesn't sound right at all, does it? So let's try that again. There's B. There's three notes there, and then we need two more. So it's actually here, like that. And that's B minor, major, sorry. B minor is like that. So with that knowledge, you can go about and come up with a lot of different chord arrangements. And you can use these to form the basis of a song. C major, F major, 
A minor, and then G major. C major, F major, A minor, G major. And you could write some lyrics. And it could be a little pop success for you. So, with that in mind, for your homework, I would like you to learn to play by reading the music Ode to Joy by Ludwig van Beethoven. To start with, don't worry about learning the bass part. Forget about that. But learn the treble part, the top series of staves and bars. You'll find that it's a lot easier than it looks to read music, and also a lot easier to play it once you know the rules. Also for your homework, I would like you to explore different chord structures. C major, C minor, and see if you can write a little song for me. It doesn't have to be complicated, it can be really simple, but just something that involves four different chords, and they can be major or minor, all major, all minor, or a combination of the two. You don't have to write any words, you can hum it, but I want you to see if you can write a little song to show me for our next lesson. So, until then, it's good to see you, and keep playing.